right. Any uh, any questions on or comments from the last meet, uh, minute meeting? Lab minutes for the last meeting. Yeah, they were fine. I, I let Bernie know. Yep. Yes, he did. He always does. If so, uh, and then move it to accept. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay, I second it. There we go. Yep. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Great. Um, okay, so now we'll go to comments from the uh, public. And let's see again, if we can keep it to two to three minutes, that would be great. I think, Jim, you were here uh, first. So if you want to start off. I'm just going to listen. Sounds good. Thank you for joining us. Um, actually, I wasn't paying attention to who was next, so I'll just kind of go around the horn here for my screen. So, Jeanette? Um, hi. Hey. So, my comments or, or my concerns are the parking, uh, the illegal parking situation is, is um, back up and running. Okay. And um, I, I think the word is out that there's not really accountability for doing it. So after five o'clock, um, tenants with two cars are moving their cars from visitor and adding their second car. Um, I've already informed um, management of at least two issues. And then all weekend long, and of course it's behind me. So I send pictures, but it's not really working. And yesterday, someone's actually parked in my spot. So I think we need to um, get a handle on that again. I mean, it worked for about a week, but it's not working anymore. And obviously, they know either you're not being towed or there's nobody really watching. And so the problem is uh, on the rise again. All right. Um... Let's see, any uh, any comments on the Westmount side as to what we've got going on for parking enforcement or plans for what we've got set up? I actually reached out to Tiger this week as well to um, the contacts that we've reached out to, several of them will only tow um, in various, very narrow circumstances. So we used to have a contract with somebody that they would patrol, they would tow, they would do it all. And then there was a situation where, I don't know that it was at our property or at another property where there's violence and threats and bodily harm and so on. Um, so we've been looking for that new tow company that will do what we need in terms of patrolling. And again, as Jeanette pointed out, it's um, been after hours, which is difficult to um, for us to patrol. Um, after hours and weekends. So we're looking for that company. We just got a new list of some contacts and the site staff is reaching out to those to see if they will be willing to patrol for us. So we're in the throes of trying to, um, to do that as well. And I believe um, Jeanette, correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe Amy or Anna, correct me if I'm wrong. After you reported it to us, we did call the company and they were on their way pretty quickly. So by letting us know it's really helpful so that we're able, it's it's a it's a team. It takes a team effort to get done. So um, I don't, what was the end result of that? They were towed pretty quickly or notified? Did they move? Yeah, they already had I, moved by the time the tow company had arrived. Okay. And we I had to handle it, otherwise we get charged for it. Yeah, I found out who the person was and I um, told them to move their car. Is out of curiosity, are we allowed to? Or, I mean, are we allowed to issue our own parking tickets and find people and 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 not renew because of it? Or I mean, what sort of enforcement that mechanism? Would be great. That would be wonderful. I, technically, it's a lease. You know, it's a minor lease violation if we do catch them. So we it just it, again at the end of the day the enforcement and what we're struggling with with pretty straightforward housing cases yep. um well i'm just like one of the things i'm wondering and there again this is, i think that it, ideally if we can outsource and have a towing company and deal with yeah, that that's but, a um, but one of the other items would be it's like not for nothing but if we have assigned parking spaces you know if somebody goes ahead and takes a picture of your car in an assigned parking space and yep. it's date stamped and it's sent to the office, 
you know, that's reasonable proof that the person's screwing around with this and that we're able, you know, and again, assuming the car is registered with us, if it's not registered with us, it's harder, but hopefully we can catch them at some point. Right. Um, is, is that something that might be helpful, do you think, or is that too much or is that just going to be ineffective? I, I don't, I just thought of it. We will try it. I mean, I think all of this is such a, um, it, it, it's tough. You know, we've tried barnacling that wasn't successful. We've tried a lot of different avenues. So I'm willing to give this a shot. And again, notifying residents to say, hey, once again, <laughs> here we yes. are. We'll go back to sending your, the weekly blasts that you'd love to get. Yeah, that's that's what's going to basically happen. We're going to start off with those blasts again. And once those blasts start going, you see everybody's not up there no longer. Um, it takes one truck, one truck to come a week and then they'll 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 see. Well, I mean, and, and even using shame, which is. It's one of the tools, I mean, but just thinking and again, this is likely a bad idea, but just put a thought out there. It's like, look, people go ahead and take if somebody's parked and not in not their spot. Take a you know a timestamp photo, send it into the office. Yeah. And by the way, Amy will go ahead and publish that each week with the blast. Here are the cars that were caught that were not in the right spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, again, that, that. that might cause a lot of that might cause more problems than it solves. But um, I mean, just under anything that we can do to help to to hit this because it's going to be a problem forever. Hopefully, we'll get. So can I just, can I just ask a question? So sure. there are there are companies like right in town that have tow trucks that actually send their trucks out for accidents on the merit. I know Anthony Sarasso station does that. Um, you can't call them and say, listen, if we just send you a text, could you just go in and get the car? You don't even have to surveillance because basically I'm doing most of the surveillance at this point because it's always by me. But can't somebody just go and call them and tell them? And then when the car goes down to their station, they could walk down there. It would be their responsibility to pay for whatever fees you would have to pay for. You do that a couple of times. They have to pay a few hundred bucks to get their car back. Okay. Otherwise, they're not getting it. They're not going to do it. And so I'm sure there's at least four stations in town that all have tow trucks. Yeah, and though and the you would be you would like think we because that, we're though. part of the housing authority that they would be willing to come over here because we're local. Um, no, that's not even that is not even an option to them to give us. They're like, no, unless it's there on the site at the moment, that's the only time they could come, and we have to sign for it. Yeah, they want the 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 issue becomes is that they if we're calling, they want us to be on site. So again, it's happening after hours. That's been the general overarching. I can't say specifically which tow company flat out said, absolutely not, we're not doing this. Um, I can't remember which one said, we will only do it if you guys sign and give us a check um, or who said we need a management person there to document everything every step of the way. But we're, we'll, we again have a list, a new list of some other tow companies that we're going to be reaching out to to see if they'd be willing to do it as well. And people that have worked with the town before. So, again, do you, um, do you know him? Do, Scott, do you know him? Then they've been in New Canaan forever. I, it, like, it, as yeah, Jan, Janette, I mean, one of the hassles is there, there's, I mean, it's one thing when you go out and you handle an accident or, or a problem as a tow truck. And it's another thing to be a, essentially to be a cop. And as, as some no, of the issues- I don't, come I don't mean to be a cop. I just mean to say, listen, cause you know what, then I don't have any place to park. Yeah. Okay, so that becomes, right. So I'm just saying as one business person or New Canaanite business uh, person to another um, to say, hey, listen, I'm, a, I'm on the board over here. Is there any possibility that you can help us out with a tow when we need it? That's all I'm asking. But if not, okay, fine. Well, we'll just have to work it the way it's being worked. I don't know. But so, I'm just saying right now, it's so, not really being worked. So I think the combination of what Scott is suggesting and, again, uh, putting stickers, we will as we see that, um, calling tow companies as we see that. If you Again, if you have the picture of their your the, um, who's in your spot with oh, the license plate and stuff of that nature, hundreds. again, so all great. Um, 
keep that going on. And we're going to concurrently be reaching out to other tow companies that we received a list of. Okay. All right. And, and then my other, my other thing was about the landscaping. So I know you guys went out of your way because you were dissatisfied before and you got a new landscaping company, but, um, Yes, they did put mulch. I haven't, I've been asking about the watering. I haven't seen any water go on, um, but they, they weed whack or mow over the weeds, but there's no grass. They, they didn't plant any new plantings. They didn't put any shrubbery in, um, and there's definitely no grass. And so it's only like low cut weeds now. So, and again, I don't know what's going on because I asked Amy about watering. Um, I haven't seen it. So is there irrigation or not? Or are we getting, um, I mean, are you getting your money's worth? Irrigation as as is, is turned on. They discovered there were um, several points where they need to do repairs. And if they don't do the repairs, water is going to be going in every single different direction or um, cause bigger issues if we don't fix the, the issues first. So they're scheduled to be coming out um, in the next week or two. I can't remember the exact date. I think it's next week. Great. All right. All right. And then and, once and we have the water, then we can address some of the other things that you were listing off. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, let's see. Uh, Cindy? Hey, Scott, thanks. Um, my question's for Amy and Anna. Um, hi, ladies. Hi. Um, with the kids, hi. With the weather getting nice and, you know, the kids are excited, the school's going to be out. I worry because, you know, they're coming out into the parking lot and playing. And I feel for these kids. It doesn't, is there any place they could play on the property besides the parking lot? No. 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 Uh, yeah, that, you know, the cars go in and out, and I worry. I worry. It, it's a, yeah, it's, I, I know. I had I had addressed uh, some of the families here already, and letting them know that they cannot be riding bikes freely uh, amongst the area here as well. So yes, that's been a thing addressed as well. That's an issue, um, and there seems to be a lot more kids lately than normal. Yeah, we do seem to have a lot of kids, Amy. It's true. Maybe, I don't know, do the parents know that the East School is, you know, not far from us? Maybe? No, so but that could be another, that, that, that'll be something that could be sent out to everybody and letting them yes. know, you know, this is what's available in the local area and the addresses, and I could send that out to them. Oh, and that'll be all I can do, the, the most I can do for them. Yeah. That's a lot, though. I mean, that's helpful. All right, thank you. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wendy? Um, I was planning to listen, but about the parking thing, and um, I met someone that lives here, and she noticed, and this is what she was suspecting, is that someone from Canaan Parish maybe has an extra car and is parking along um, the diagonal se section by the river part of the pond um, and saving a spot and putting a car in there. That I'm was not, I'm not sure the there's suspicion that it, it is end up being public parking spaces, unfortunately, although I yeah. wonder if we actually get. But, uh, but, but the, the theory behind the her or the suspicion was that they have to pay for their extra parking. Yeah. We may be uh, getting shorted on parking spaces too. We, just is there a limit for how long a car can stay in those spots without ticket or is it just 24 seven, 365? Does anybody um, know? Well, I mean, I, I think there've been in the past, you know, ones with flat tires and they eventually got ticketed or something. They eventually went away, but. I have no idea. Yeah, but th maybe a 24 hour or a 48 hour parking sign or something is good. Just that way we can, again, you can't just abandon the car there. Um, and again, yeah, I don't, I don't know that anything looks abandoned at this point, but, but okay. 
this this person thought there was some yep. putting an extra card down here from Canaan Parish. All right. Um, but I don't know. Nope. We'll try to figure out. Okay, Wendy, thank you. And uh, mm -hmm. Lisa? I'm just listening. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, okay, so why don't we move to public side of our um, meetings. And hi, hi, Peggy, how are you doing? Good, thanks. <laughs> Um, so why don't we start out with our, I think our agenda goes with, um, starts with, uh, our West Mount reports. Hi. All right. Let us, let me just open up my cheat sheets here. So just running through um, the property status report, we are working on um, four turnovers for the property, um, one in Millport phase two and three in Millport phase one. Um, we're getting into that needing to boost up our marketing again for the one bedroom LAHTC units again. Um, and we'll probably need to do something on a um, following the affirmative fair housing marketing plan and making sure that we're doing it in accordance with what we pledged to do. Um, and that will also include adding in re outreach to community agencies and in newspapers and things of that nature. Yep. We did have two new move-ins, um, one in Millport phase one, another one in Millport phase two. And we're continuing with the AR collection. Um, I won't get too much into that, but we are working. One thing just overarching I wanted to let you guys know is that this um, we're starting to open up the dialogue again with DSS with some of the retro pay that they're owing us. Um, so that's great news. Um, siding repairs are being done. Um, Actually, Amy and Anna, did you happen to know the date that they will be coming for the siding repair? Maybe I, Amy has that information. I don't have that information. Okay. I know that they were, it was a miscommunication on what was needed on something. So I think we cleared that up and that's pending and that's, we're going to be working with the vendor to schedule on that. Yeah, they, we're trying to get them for next week, but. I told them that I needed it done before Friday. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to fast forward down our list and let you all know too, we have a HUD MOR review with our HUD um, community assigned agent. Um, she's coming down from Boston. Her name is Erin. Uh, we're in the throes of getting all the required documents together to get to her. She sent me an email yesterday afternoon saying all the material that she will need by Friday. Uh, end of business day. So we were working very <laughs> diligently to Jeez. get that to her um, by the end of the week. Um, and then she'll be coming down to the site and doing her typical MOR review following the 9834. And we're pretty well prepared for those questions. And um, yeah, and I have a question. Now that only sure. applies to the RAD units and the people Correct. that have vouchers. That's correct. It's the 18 okay. units that are. Well, sometimes in. I feel that everyone is 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 referred to as HUD federal housing, but that's not the case. That is not the case. This is just the 18 units. Um, they do look at Millport Phase Two as a whole, but then focus in on the compliance end mm -hmm. of the 18 units. So, um, again, the property will be inspected as a whole, but if they need to see anything, it's be specific to those 18 units, files or physical other um, plant. And um, Amy and Anna have been working diligently to get the um, as many dates as we can that for regular scheduled preventative maintenance items on calendars to notify residents to keep them in the um, in the know in terms of when we're gonna be going in and out of the community or in units. Um, and yeah. they're keeping up with that. Um, so as a, for instance, we'll in July have inspections for the sprinkler system and then coming up um, for a quarterly extermination. The next scheduled date is in August. Numbering and striping um, had to get tabled a little bit just because of this MOR um, review. 
but as soon as it's done, um, communication is going to go out to the residents so that there can be a coordination with the vehicles because it's going to be a lot of moving around. It's going to be during the day, so ideally it will be when there's less cars there. Um, it'll be easy to move. We'll do one side, then switch, so on and so forth. Um, and we have a uh, dryer vent cleaning scheduled. Again, Aqualon is the sprinkler system and that repair is scheduled. We did have a pressure test on the system for the elevators. Um, I didn't see any report saying it was good, but bad or otherwise. So I'm kind I'm waiting. <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. Before you, you finish, uh, Anne, we said dryer vent cleaning. Now that refers to Millport phase one and two, which they have. Dry that's correct. Correct. Okay. Yes, that's for the 12 buildings only. So um, again, that just is another one of our preventative maintenance items that we may have addressed earlier, but we're pushing off just an extra week because of the MOR review. Um, in preparation for the MOR review, we did unit inspections um, and created work orders for any work that needs to get done as a result of our inspections. Um, and sending out reminder notices about the garbage recycling and the curbing of um, pets and the pet policy. That's a bulk of the, what's going on at the property. Does anybody have any questions on that end? How's, how's garbage working now? Are we any better or are we still in similar situations to what we've had? Amy and Anna, I'll let you answer that one. Well, um, I, I think the only problem that we had was because of the week. In actuality, I haven't seen any bulk items being put out. Um, and when they are, um, it's basically they're gone within the next hour or so. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we, we really had needed the bigger spacing of dumpsters and stuff like that. But, you know, it's it's always a plus if it is um, because, you know, people, everybody complains about one. It's just one thing or another, you know, but um, it's been working. I haven't seen anything else. It's just when we have that hiccup of a, a, a holiday on a Monday, that's when it just gets the overflow go and, yeah. and everybody starts, you know, panicking and flipping out. Nope, just a uh, not, it's resolved not, not, immediately not, that next morning, you know? Yeah, Amy, not as a pun. But you can't keep kicking the can forward. We still have to have these dumpsters behind an enclosure. Otherwise, the place looks like a garbage dump itself. And you have people coming to look at apartments. They want, wouldn't want to live here if they see that. The dumpsters have to go behind the, the fencing. Uh, oh, we have, have to have bigger fencing because yeah, we have by to get phase one, fencing. we need another dumpster. There are boxes that, are not, besides breaking them down, it has to accompany be available for so many people. We used to have it for like 20 apartments, half a bill. Now we added another 33 and it's still the same dumpster. We need another dumpster. We spoke about this several times. We addressed yeah. it at the last meeting. Now's the time to do something. Hey, yeah, Bernie, we, well, is... the guy is supposed to be coming out for that anyway, but we also have to, re, we have to see where we can actually put the dumpsters at. So, hey, hey, Bernie, this, hey, Bernie yes. this is Rick. This is Rick. Yeah, uh, I hear you. Subject, yeah, okay, good. On that subject, the question that I have is that to add dumpsters is going to require some curb cutting. It's going to require concrete pad pouring and refencing. So in, it seems like a small project, but it actually gets uh, gets a little pricey pretty pretty quickly. Not nothing crazy, but but it is you know, we would have to spend some money. And so my question is, do you think we would be better off adding yet another pickup day rather than spending money and changing the physical structure of the enclosures and adding dumpsters? Rick, the answer to both is yes. The dumpster that's there is not behind the enclosure. It has to be in the enclosure, and there's not, not enough room with all the garbage that's around there. So yeah. the, the one, one thing, even if you don't add it, and it doesn't require much, and someone got involved to the complaint that was, was, was posted on about the garbage, and that was one of our selectmen, Kathleen Corbett. 
And she was trying to get the, the town would be willing to help us with that because it's a health issue. So maybe Tiger Man would be the person to contact. I'll, I can contact Kathleen again. Uh, the town would be willing to help with that because it's important. It, I'm actually gonna pull, okay. I might, I have some pictures that I took from last week when I was looking at this. Um, there's a couple areas where we can get maybe another foot, maybe two, um, but there's a couple areas where we just really can't touch because I of know. what's going on. Amy and, and I even, did a walkthrough and we, uh, we uh, I even measured it. There are many areas you can't touch, but the worst theory is that between building one and two, the others don't seem to be as, as, as stressful as that, that area. Yeah. yeah. And, and that one, particular area, there is nothing there. You can't even, there's not even the spacing of it. That's why, that's why you're going to have to cut the curbs and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I'm just trying to find my pictures to sort of illustrate it and what I was talking about, but continue. Anyway, I think the bottom line is we're aware of it. We're trying to come up with the Absolutely. most effective and efficient solution. But just keep in mind that while we know that there is an issue, the, the long weekend is what triggers it. You know, it's not something that, that we're getting complaints about weekly. It just is during those circumstances. All right, so it's being worked it's, on. And city carney so should be able to put that dumpster that's there now behind the, when they uh, empty the dumpster, it should be put back behind the enclosure. Yeah, they don't, the guys get lazy and they don't want to get out of the truck and close the gate. So Rick, is that's there not, a That's not by phase back, one. Brother. That's not phase one. That's phase in one phase two. A... No, this is phase one. Phase two, you'd have it's um this is phase one. This is heading straight into hold on, let me see if I can find my other uh pictures. This is this is looking at that. So that's the recycling, right? No, that's just the garbage dump. So there's nothing for recycling in this picture. Well, the, what's in the, this corral is what I sh was showing open. So I took it open. This is the only one that I can see that we would have any real room to do any sort of expansion of the corral area. Well, yeah, you, you're showing two curbs on both sides. There's no room between those gates. I don't think I'm going to take some pictures myself and then we'll compare it. We don't have to take time at the meeting to do yeah. that. I'm so sure the I, problem, I do have the problem these, can I... be solved and will be solved. Right. Yep, definitely. That's I have a sure. question. Is there is there a way when there's a long weekend? I think we're already we increased three pickups a week. Is that that's correct? So when yeah. the, so when there's a Monday holiday, is there a way of working with the pickup company to to resolve that, I mean, to maybe do a pickup on Saturday and then on Tuesday. With, with three Happy. days, you might already be. Yeah, you still just need that extra one. You need to if it's on the Monday, if pickups on Monday, you have to have the extra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what, if again, if we can see if we can hit that because obviously that's a health, safety, and a quality of life one. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so other questions on for Westmount under public stuff. All right, so when we hit the budgets, and budgets are actually looking very good with the exception of insurance, which we know about. And, and, and can you comment on the budget since I'm, I don't have them in front of me? Sure, sure. Sorry about that. I was actually starting to talk, but was muted. Sorry. So we're cracking away at working um, on the accounts receivable end, which is helping us with 
other things. Um, yeah. But yeah, going through, we're pretty much on track budget wise. The, the, the two numbers that we're jumping out, as you um, said, Scott, are the property and liability insurance line. And we did have um, a little jump in some of the um, utilities for some of the properties, not all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then a repairs contracts and materials, again, are just a function of us catching up on some of our maintenance items that we're finding as we're do going in doing repairs and some of the preventative maintenance items. Now, I'm also saying that there's an audit expense that, you know, we have a $12,000 savings, but is that just a timing issue? And We'll get that, we'll get hit with the audit later. Yeah, yeah. So this is kept, it's not showing us, you know, what's happening monthly, but mm -hmm. this is an aggregate number. So we'll see that. <laughs> nope, that's, that's a big one inside of there. And then, yeah, it looks like we've collected a bunch. You, you've gotten the tenant assistance thing, which is huge. Yeah. Right. And we're continuing to do, um, and uh, there's um, some other collection stuff that we could talk an executive about. Um, any other comments from other commissioners or any highlights from Westmount? Not at the moment. No, I, I, there's some things I'll mention in the executive session. No, no it, I, I thought the budgets looked not in bad shape, just uh, frustrating on the AR. Yep. But promising. Okay, well, if there's no other further um, open questions, is there anything else we should be talk, discussing in um, open session? Anyone have anything on their agenda? Seeing none, do we have a motion to move to executive session? I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, well, thank, thank you uh, all the tenants for checking in. Uh, Jim, Cindy, Lisa, uh, Amy, Wendy, Jeanette, appreciate it. If you guys could drop now, that would be great. We'll carry on. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you all. Bye. All right. AR. AR. Hmm. R. R. You want to stop recording? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for reminding me. Just one moment, please. Like you need to have a lot of people involved just to remember this stuff. <laughs> We're gonna turn it on, turn it off. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to uh do oh, sorry? I'll make a motion to adjoin. A second. Second. Favor. Ayes. Aye. Awesome. Okay. Good night, Thanks folks. Everyone. Take, Take care. care. Thank you. Bye-bye.